going on everybody this is Jeff with living in Arizona and today we're going to talk about ways to stay cool in the Arizona heat with the summer coming up we know May right about now is when it's going to start to really get into the hundreds and then by the time we get to June we're all the way in the hundreds quite consistently July is probably the hottest month and this video is going to focus on how to stay cool for those of you who are from out of state some of the things that we do in Arizona to stay cool right so let's do that this comes in from Linda G regarding swamp coolers. It's the best way. It's the other. Oh, it's the other way around. Swamp evaporative coolers only work when the humidity is less than 50%. I have bought swamp coolers here in the Phoenix area to save on AC costs and they work great. They also add to the humidity. So that's why they only work in dry climates. Okay, so it's not really a question, but it's a comment about staying cool in Phoenix, right? And she's saying swamp coolers when it's below 50% humidity. What happens when monsoon season comes and it is a bit more humid, right? So what's going to work? So I'm going to recommend central cooling. So this is just for your house. Now bear in mind, all across Phoenix and the state, there's going to be uh, multiple different times when you're gonna to need to stay cool. It could be in transit, when you're in your car, when you're at the bus stop, when you are um, out in your backyard, what, what are the, the variations of things that you need to know or things that you can do to stay cool? How does how do people make it bearable during these winter months, right? And so, are these summer months. Now, I'm going to recommend central cooling over a swamp cooler, but if swamp coolers are the only thing you've got available, those can work too. You've got to make sure it's an evap it's got water going into the swamp cooler. We used to have one when I was a kid and it seemed to work, but uh, you know, I think central cooling is the best. Now, what are some other things that you can add to your home to stay, uh, you know, cool that keep the, the insulation and the cool temperatures in it's your windows. You need these sun shades, right? And so sun shades are a really effective tool for blocking the sun. And these are sun shades. See these black screens, putting those over your windows is going to keep the cool weather in and the hot weather out or the heat of the sun out. Your windows can be like a radiation uh, mech, you know, component. It's a hard surface and it radiates heat, especially as the sun beats down on it. So when you put a sunscreen on it, that blocks out some of the sun, which helps keep your home insulated while you can still have your windows open. Just closing the blinds is not going to be enough. So. I've personally put sunscreens on there. The only problem that I have with sunscreens is in the winter time, if you really like uh, sun, you know, it's gonna also block out your sun in the winter time. So you might consider removing them during the winter uh, if you like natural sunlight. But in the summertime, these are really effective. Uh, I think you could do your whole house for about $1,500. So check out sunscreens. You can do them on your uh, wall screen system, patio screen system, sunscreens for the windows. There's a whole variety. This is ArizonaSunscreen.com. There's many of them. Check them out. Now, going back to the central cooling issue, forced air versus central air, what's the difference? You can learn about that going on to this website called Ernst Heating and Cooling. They'll explain the whole thing so you can make the decision as to whether or not you want to go with uh, forced air or central cooling. I personally prefer the central cooling, um, but here's the difference and it can go into that. I'm not going to go into that in this video. Now, also some of the other things you can do for your backyard because it does get hot in your backyard, right? You're going to want shade. You're going to want uh, protection and these are outdoor sunscreens. So they have awnings. Uh, something like this can just create a microclimate in your backyard. And basically what you're trying to do is create a microclimate for yourself and your vegetation, whether it be if you're growing your own food or if you have uh, animals, you want shade back there. And believe it or not, the shade can, I don't know, it feels like it could take the temperature down 10 to 15 degrees. I mean, just the, the bright sun beating down on you can be pretty intense and being able to block that with shade can really make the heat of the, the atmosphere a lot more tolerable, believe it or not. So. Um, if, if you move into a brand new house and you don't quite have shade trees creating a microclimate, maybe you would build a microclimate or shade uh, with these kind of sunscreens or awnings or something along the lines like this. Now, if you're trying to get into your car, right, 
first thing I'll tell you right now, you could get, if you have leather seats and you try to get in your car and you don't have a sunscreen or a sunshade on your windows, you sitting down in your car after it's been baking, just in the direct sunlight, let's say you're at Target, for an hour, you go out there, you touch your steering wheel, you will be like, ah, ah, ah. So having a steering wheel cover, also having seat covers, but having one of these sunshades is going to help keep the heat out of your car. I mean, you could get in your car without a sunshade and it will be like, whoa, you're like, whoa, can't touch the steering wheel just yet. You know, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay. It gets hot. Uh, so having a sunshade and using it or parking under an awning or parking in your garage, but if that's not available because you're out shopping at 12 o'clock in the afternoon till two, you're at Costco and you're doing all this stuff, you're going to be in the direct sunlight, might not be covered parking. You might not be able to find a tree to park under. You know, you can always park under a tree, but it might be shaded when you go into the store, but because the sun moves, now it's no longer under the shade. So you've been getting an hour and a half worth of uh, sun on beating into your car and radiating the heat. With that being said, you saw Fido behind me. Well, Larry, uh, he would not do good in, you don't leave your animals and your kids. Your kids, obviously kids first, right? Definitely don't leave your kids in a car for a very long period of time, I'd say longer than two minutes in that heat without an air conditioner on at least. Um, you should never really leave your kids unattended in a vehicle, but uh, anything longer than two minutes without the, I mean, two minutes, people are gonna say, hey, that's even not enough. But do not leave animals and or kids in that extreme heat. Once it goes over about 80 degrees, I mean, you could say 90 degrees, you could say 100, but I'm gonna say 80, 85. Once it's over 80, 85, do not leave your kids or your animals in the car for longer than two minutes because it can get pretty hot in there, especially if all things are off and it's just radiating heat. I mean, it's definitely, when it's 100 degrees out, you cannot leave your animals in there or your kids in there. It's just not a good idea. It's the dumbest thing you could probably do. And people will actually... I've heard people, they say they, they will bust your window if they see you doing that. If you leave your kids in the car unattended, even with the air conditioner on in the Arizona heat, people, there are these like <laughs> people, vigilantes out there that will take justice in their own hand and break your window, believe it or not. So do not even try that. And I'm telling you, I know that sounds kind of cruel and rude and stuff like that, but people do it. I wouldn't do that to people's cars. I don't, I don't believe in, unless it was like a, a real big issue, but even then I'd still be trying to figure out a way to get the child out of the car in a safer situation. If I noticed that the parent was on drugs or something, you know, then I would call in, maybe I would call in something as, especially depending on if it was a life or death situation. But for the most part, I'm not going to be breaking someone's window because I am under the assumption that that person has been gone for a long time. If the dog looks like it's panting, you know, whatever. But, uh, regardless of that, you, it's kind of common sense. But those are things you can do to keep your own car cool when you're out at work or shopping because it will heat and radiate and you might be getting in your car and you're like, I'm sick of getting in my car when it's so damn hot. What can I do? Well, obviously, sunshades and steering wheel cover and seat covers can help keep those things cool. Uh, having your air conditioner coolant, um, air conditioner, uh, you know, maintenance, you want to start make, thinking about that in April making sure your air conditioner is going to be able to get you through the summer. Is it going to be putting too much pressure on your radiator, right? Stuff like that. And then um, back to the tree thing. If you're interested in knowing about trees that you want for shade in your backyard or your front yard, certain trees grow better in Arizona because they're more drought tolerant. Many trees can grow here. Heck, I've even seen a mango tree, huge mango tree. But the thing is, if you you got to get it past the first five years, and and getting it past the first five years is going to require some TLC and a little bit of environmental luck. But um, some of these trees are going to be more drought tolerant, and you can see here on A and P Nursery, they've got a Sisu tree, a Sisu tree, a Tipuana Tipu, which I have in my backyard. You can also use a Mal, uh, Museum Palo Verde, Arizona ash, so an ash tree, a weeping willow. Uh, African sumac, bonita ash. You can see basically what you're looking for is one that creates an umbrella, right? Like a canopy. Some of them do that better than others. This Arizona ash and uh, uh, yeah, the Arizona ash looks like a pretty good one. Also, mulberries you can't necessarily use because uh, HOAs don't like those. Shamal ash, 
just a couple different trees. You're going to also want to know if they're evergreen or if they drop seeds and, you know, if the seeds are going to get everywhere or if the flowers are going to get everywhere and create a mess and require that every two weeks you bring out a landscaper because there's stuff all over the ground, right? Um, some of these trees do and some of them don't create messes. So if messes are a big thing, then make sure you pick a tree, ask the, the nursery, you know, is it going to be messy? Is it going to require a lot of water? How much irrigation do I need? Uh, how is it doing in the winter? Stuff like that. But this is a list. Pause it. Go through it. Sisu, Tipu, uh, Museum Palo Verde, Arizona Ash. They didn't even mention uh, mesquite tree. Uh, they also didn't mention elm trees. Chinese. Oh, yeah, they did. Elm. Elms are, I have those in my backyard. Those do really good. You can see the, the canopy there is really nice. And so uh, on some other websites, some things you can do to stay cool, nine tips to stay cool during Arizona power outages. This is coming from ABC 15. If someone doesn't have air conditioning, they should seek relief from the heat during the warmest part of the day in places like schools, libraries, theaters, malls, getting out of the house. Don't stay in your house if you don't have AC during the heat of the day. That can be really wicked. Um, hot cars can be de deadly. Never leave children or pets in a vehicle the inside of the temperature of the car can reach 120 degrees. That is no joke, guys. Serious. Stay hydrated by drinking plenty of fluids. Avoid drinks with caffeine or alcohol. Such a bummer for some of you uh, coffee uh, fanatics. And you got to stay hydrated. Getting dehydrated is really easy to do out here in the desert. And I'm not just understating that. It is serious. Avoid extreme temperature changes. Okay. Wear loose fitting, lightweight, light colored clothing. Avoid dark colors because they absorb the sun rays. Kind of obvious. We've heard about this since. Stay indoors and avoid strenuous exercise during the hottest part of the day. Postpone outdoor games and activities. If your kids are playing in say all-stars, like when I was a kid, I played in little league all-stars. That was during the summer. And you know, we, we would have to wait to start the games until about 5 PM. Uh, anything before that was just crazy. <laughs> And even then at 5 p.m. you're still hot but summer baseball uh, use a buddy system when working in excessive heat take frequent breaks if outdoor working outdoors if you start feeling lightheaded that could be a sign of heat stroke especially if you drink if you're working out in your backyard and you're drinking coffee to start your day and you're not drinking enough water you might at some point start feeling like well womp, well, womp. that means hydrate take a break cool down go inside somewhere cool if you can't find a place to stay indoors, go under a tree uh, and and basically stop moving. Okay, I mean, and, or seek professional advice. I mean, uh, but you know that's kind of something you can do if that's what we would do back in the day before we had cell phones on command. It was just like go under a tree, lay down, drink some water. I mean, there's certain things that you can do and cannot do, right? Uh, depending on your circumstances, check on animals frequently to ensure they are not suffering from the heat. Make sure they have plenty of cool water. Your animals out in your backyard all day, tied up, doing this and that, not going to really work. You're going to want to give them breaks indoors. Uh, if you're going to let them go outside early in the morning, but in the heat of the day, they need to either have a doggy house or something. Uh, some other things that you can do that I recommend for an outdoor yard to stay cool. Having a mister system in your backyard is something you can do to continue entertaining your guests at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, say, on the, you know, uh, July afternoon because you're gonna have a mister system around your patio and your awning so it's shaded plus you're getting an evaporative cooler or some sort of water cooling happening and you know you're standing by a pool it's going to be tolerable it's not gonna be ideal but it, it makes it tolerable you can see these people they're sitting outside uh, eating even in a hot day because they've got misters so that's something that you can do for outdoor cooling systems also installing a fan on your patio can cool it down just a little bit so shade, outdoor fan, and misters are three things that you can do. If you can't get shade from an awning, you can get shade from a tree. Like I talked about, microclimates for your plants. So things like this. There's other websites that give you tips. Uh, keep the blinds closed, which I recommend sunshades plus blinds. Keep those fans going. Invest in window film. That's another alternative. That's like window tint for your house. Swap out light bulbs. Keep yourself cool. Dress for the heat. Wear a wet towel. I mean, these are above and beyond. This is barrier insulation ink, but install shade elements. Cook outdoors. I guess, you know, <laughs> I mean, if you want to cook outdoors in 112, sure. Uh, maybe wait till six o'clock, right? Cotton bedding, dampen your sheets, 
pack in the cool get your home insulation upgraded so uh if you're you could it could be possible that your house also is suffering because the insulation in your garage because your garage is not insulated but the rest of your house is and the insulation that is around your door that goes to your garage is not properly insulated this can create a problem for you right so also 12 tips uh also from when in your state so lock it down make sure you keep the doors closed right lights out some lights can radiate heat believe it or not uh, block it out they've got shades and different types of things you can do do or do not dry so uh, doing your laundry outside letting it air dry uh, obviously we talked about the AC unit your biggest fan I mean what kind of fans can you get right drink it up stay hydrated even putting some cucumbers or something mint in your water can be a good thing for hydration eating light Overeating certain foods can really make you feel bogged down and feel like, you know what, during uh, hot days. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I don't make the rules for this stuff. Uh, stay wet, you know, get the kids slip and slide. Get them those uh, bounce houses that also have some sort of water feature, water slide on them. Uh, hoses on a lawn. Take them to water parks. Take it easy. Learn, <laughs> learn to work online in a, you know, office. Hang loose, okay? Mind over matter. I mean, you could also, that's when you take your holidays north. Or you could be like a snowbird and just leave Phoenix altogether from May till uh, October, right? And then you have, um, you know, so there's other things. If you're looking for ideas, I think Pinterest has been really useful for ideas, whether it be for pavers, like if you're looking for paver ideas, or say you're looking for ideas for pools, or outdoor dining arrangements, or seating arrangements, or barbecues. Or patio awnings or just anything go on Pinterest believe it or not Pinterest is a good place to just go through a whole bunch of images and see how to decorate your house uh, you can get all types of different ideas just type into the search what you're looking for let's just say you wanted pavers right so pavers all right there's a whole bunch of paver ideas you know you can see like different patterns um, I use this I mean there's flagstone there's pavers Look at these three different types of pavers here for, they got the edge and then they've got an edge inside of an edge. They've got these different unique patterns and then they've got these right here. Some, uh, all types of stuff. As far as patio awnings go, I mean, I've gotten really familiar with a lot of this stuff. Feel free to ask me questions. I mean, I've worked with pool guys, general contractors. I've, I'm almost like, I can general contract basically myself. I know electricians, I know um, awning guys, I know uh, backyard patio guys who can do aluminum wood uh, regular real wood uh, concrete pavers irrigation you name it I mean I can at least guide you in the same direction like I said I mean I'm almost a general contractor myself in fact I might end up doing it because there is such a demand for this kind of stuff with all these new homes people need to get this stuff done and they're having a hard time finding the demand so if you're a general contractor now's a good time to move to Arizona because I'm telling you landscape all that stuff is in demand as they build these house after house every single one of these blank yards is going to need some sort of backyard design some of them won't do anything but some of them will say get bored with the blank uh, canvas after they move in and three months goes by and they say okay honey what to do with the backyard well let's call the landscape company and see what they can do for us pool whatever pools are really popular Anyways, guys, thanks for subscribing to Living in Arizona, and we will see you next time. Watch one of these other videos. Subscribe to this channel. Plenty of other videos for you guys to watch. Hope you guys enjoy this channel. See you later.